Um, I thank you very, very, very much. Uh, and I want, first of all, to thank the Ford Foundation, uh, the amount of research that we've been able to do over the years uh, has been greatly forwarded and, and furthered and supported by the Ford Foundation. It just would not have been possible uh, for us, for example, to create the International Association for the Study of the Commons. Uh, that uh, is a very important international association cross-disciplinary now that has scholars that are able to communicate and discuss with one another uh, recent findings, try to figure them out, et cetera. Our next meeting will be in Japan, as it turns out, uh, in 2000. Hmm? Yes, and the next meeting in the global IASC will be in Japan in July or June of 2013. Uh, also, in terms of my own research, uh, and that of my colleagues at the Workshop on Political Theory and Policy Analysis. Without the active support of the Ford Foundation through the years, it just would not have been feasible. Uh, and uh, it was a very fundamental supporter of our international forestry resources and institutions research program. Uh, we're very, very pleased with the uh, development of this where we have university to university uh, collaboration working with local communities in Africa, in Latin America, in Asia, and in the United States. And uh, this, it, the Ford Foundation just has been very essential. Um, and uh, I want to also take a moment to thank members of the indigenous communities that we have studied through the years, as well as other, um, not indigenous, but other communities. I've learned a lot from them. Uh, and I think it is very important for us to hear what have been the struggles they have faced, how did they begin to start thinking about overcoming, some didn't, and why? What were the obstacles that just got bigger and bigger? Uh, others overcame, and learning how people are able to uh, work together, and so uh, a current book is on working together, how people are able to work together. I really have to stress that working together notion, uh, because it, Sometimes the presumption is that authorities from the outside, they've got the knowledge. They've got to come in. They've got to t make the decisions. Now, the authorities from outside have interesting and important things to contribute. But it's not that they do all the decisions and they design the successful. It's when they can learn to work together with uh, units at a variety of scales, including all the way down to uh, small communities. Um, and um, the, um, uh, I have had the chance to do uh, some field research with my colleagues in Mexico. Uh, uh, that has been a great asset for me. Uh, I was born just north of the border in Los Angeles. Uh, so I have a long history of uh, connections on the west coast of the uh, U.S.-Mexico uh, continent, uh, and it's just been a wonderful experience through the years. Um, the um, um, people want, wanted me to do a little bit of an overview of what is it I have learned uh, from resource users around the world. I keep talking about learning from them. And I was extremely fortunate as a doctoral student that I was just assigned uh, to uh, attend the meetings of a water user association. Uh, these were water users using the groundwater basin, uh, groundwater basin underlying the city of Los Angeles and 10 other cities. So the boundary of the basin was not the same as any of the political units. Uh, so you had some cities in, some cities with a portion in, a portion of LA County, uh, uh, Shell Oil and large scale utility companies. Uh, 
and uh, I attended their monthly meetings for several years. And um, they finally, uh, I was the only woman for a while, and they finally got comfortable with me in the room at the beginning. They, did, they didn't know exactly what about this woman graduate students. But as soon as they got comfortable, I, I could hear them discussing intently. I mean, it, this was a tough one. Uh, and um, they were able to use a variety of instruments to design some new institutional arrangements. And they designed them over the 50s and 60s. Uh, and fortunately, uh, I ended up doing my dissertation there. And that was before Garrett Hardin's article in 68. And I didn't know I was studying a Collins. Uh, I was studying a real problem. And people were struggling with how to, I mean, it was making the huge difference to all of them in terms of livelihood capabilities over the time. And uh, they used a bunch of creative, I won't bore you with it, all of it right now, um, but uh, they used uh, creative ideas. And I'm very, very happy to report that uh, Bill Bilquist, uh did a return study in the 1980s and found many of the things that they had started earlier were working very well. Uh, Brian Steed has just completed a study this uh, uh, one year ago uh, looking over 50 to 60 years of experience, not just five or 10, 50 to 60 years. And the groundwater in the uh, area in Southern California covered by West Basin Water Association is higher today. They had drawn it down, brought salt water was entering like mad. And they have taken actions to replenish it uh, uh, reclaiming uh, sewer water, uh, uh, reclaiming salt water, doing all sorts of imaginative things and getting that groundwater basin so that the water level is higher. How many places have you heard around the world uh, that have actually improved a groundwater basin so that the level next to the sea is higher today, freshwater, than it was 50 or 60 years ago? They, you know, the, here, that's one of my big lessons of having listened and learned from and having arenas where people can argue and discuss these things and disagree with one another from time to time. Uh, we, we kind of think disagreement is bad. Uh, well, how do you, how do you learn? Uh, and one of the ways you learn, it's not the only way, but one of the ways is that somebody makes a point that is just entirely different than your own view of the problem that you're jointly facing. And you can say, what? Explain that to me a little better. And then potentially, I, I, I understand this and yes and I agree. But I don't agree with this. Let's, let's dig into this and, and have the time to discuss that in greater depth. Groups that have solved these problems have found ways of engaging honestly with one another and disagreeing. And what I'm hoping we can slowly do as academics is that uh, we sometimes take a disagreement as a terrible offense. It isn't. And uh, what we're working very, very hard on, and I, won't, I will talk about uh, uh, in the next couple of days, I have several formal presentations that I'm not going to repeat tonight, my formal presentations. But one of the things that we're slowly but surely working on is a way of uh, interdisciplinary language that helps us identify the key variables that can be very important in coping with resource problems around the world. And it isn't always the same set for every resource problem. What we're trying to do is get people aware of the range of sets that may be involved so that you can begin like a doctor uh, in diagnosis. Uh, over time, doctors went away from uh, presuming that there was a panacea, a single solution 
to learning diagnosis. And diagnosis was, okay, what are the four or five questions I ask first? Then in light of answers to those, what are the next four or five questions that I need to ask? And in light of answers to those, what more? So that one's digging down, down, down. And in light of digging down, one can come up with much better uh, solutions that fit local situations uh, that are not just the academics telling local people, but people working those things together. So I'll bore you a little bit with that over the next several days, but not tonight. Um, and um, I think I'll just turn it over. Uh, I don't want to repeat uh, what I'll be doing in the next several days, but I've certainly enjoyed being here again. I love Mexico. And um, the, um, uh, uh, so I'll turn it over to you to organize however you'd like to do from here.